Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing or the singing of the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The Joint Staff Annual Awards recognize those who have contributed most significantly to the accomplishments of the mission of the United States Armed Forces, as well as support to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in his role as the Principal Military Advisor to the President, the National Security Council, and the Secretary of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, General Brown. You know, uh, Warren Bennis, Bennis was a, a pioneer of leadership studies, and he uh, helped bring out uh, changes of management philosophy in both public and, and private institutions. He believed in a uh, responsive, collaborative, adaptive leadership style, saying leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. And that's what this joint staff uh, does day in and day out. Bennis also believed in the importance of a clear vision where leaders guide organizations towards a vivid future empowering teams, enabling them to uh, operate effectively for a common purpose. Let me uh, say thank you to all of you, uh, to the entire joint staff, but uh, to our educators. Uh, you looked very nice this morning. Uh, we were at a ceremony this morning to recognize the Swedish uh, Chief of Defense, um, and it was, it was quite impressive. Uh, I would highlight, uh, as I stood there uh, on the reviewing stand and, and seeing uh, each of the services honor guards representing the 2.1 million that wear our uniform, uh, this is awesome, um, and it was just moving, and, and uh, the, the chief of defense was uh, floored when he pulled up and saw all those folks. I go, who's this for? I go, it's for you, <laughs> um, but it, a pretty big deal since he'd been the chief of defense for nine years, and uh, was getting ready, to, uh, getting ready to retire. I want to thank our senior listed uh, advisors for each of our directorates and, and all the leaders here who keep the JAF joint staff moving forward. Special uh, thanks to our SEAC, uh, Troy Black, who represents the uh, 1.6 million that are enlisted corps. And uh, I'm honored to serve alongside him. He's, he's a serious, uh, serious person. <laughs> he's serious about uh, making sure we're taking care of our service members and our families. I'd like to thank everyone uh, that uh, pulled this ceremony together because uh, it doesn't happen by itself and I really appreciate the outstanding work. And thanks to the families that are here with our awards winners. Um, uh, your support is, uh, is greatly appreciated. And I also want to thank all those that are watching online. And lastly, I'd like to say uh, thanks to uh, the joint staff for their hard work every single day. You know, I was nominated to uh, be the chairman back in May of last year and thought that I would get confirmed in July and have some time to prepare. Um, this would have given me, uh, you know, time to learn a little more about the joint staff. Um, but Congress had a different plan. Uh, they gave me about a week. Um, and, uh, and so um, I've never served on the joint staff. And so my first day on the joint staff was the 1st of October of last year when I became the chairman. And I'll just tell you, I've been extremely impressed. I was impressed from uh, day one, and I've been impressed in the seven months, seven months today, matter of fact, that I, uh, I've been the chairman. 
I think about what's happened since the 1st of October 2023. In my first week, we shot down a uh, Turkish uh, unmanned aerial vehicle over Syria. Russia had continued its operations and its unprovoked aggression against Ukraine. My first Saturday as a chairman, I got an early phone call from our National Military Command Center that told me that Hamas had gone into Israel. And then we looked at the subsequent operations of uh, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces in Gaza. We've seen attack on our forces in both Iraq and Syria. We've seen the, uh, the Houthis being the Houthis, uh, attacking uh, and challenging commerce and maritime security in the Red Sea. We've responded kinetically in Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. I've been engaged with my uh, People's Republic of China counterpart, and I've had a chance to speak to 170, uh, at least 170 times, talk to my counterparts from around the world. Um, there's been an election in Taiwan, and there's been, most recently, an unprecedented, unprecedented uh, Iranian attack on Israel. You, you only have to look at the, uh, the nightly news to see how much work gets done by the Joint Staff. As I said, I've only been here uh, seven months, and there's so much that's happened, even before I arrived in 2023. You saw Ukraine's counteroffensive uh, coups in uh, Niger and other African states. There's a Chinese spy balloon, actually a couple of balloons. We're, we're really hyped on balloons now. Um, but you work routinely to make it uh, to the, uh, your work routinely makes it to the highest levels. Uh, the products you create and the recommendations and advice you shape may start in your hands in the dead of night, be in my hands before the chairman, uh, chairman's dining room first round of coffee pots are empty, be discussed with Secretary Austin after lunch, and be on President Biden's resolute desk by the afternoon. And then we'll see it on the nightly news. You all are leading through an increasingly complex global security environment. And that is on, on top of uh, all the work you do beyond responding to shaping uh, global events. Work that is equally as important, but just doesn't make it into the public. I sleep well at night, because I get that question often, what keeps you up at night? I go, nothing, I got a great joint team. Because uh, I know they're on top of it, and if they need something, they'll call me. Uh, but I really have great faith in our, uh, in our joint staff and our joint force. You know, on 2 October, uh, the day after I became the chairman, I laid out a uh, message to the Joint Force with my three expectations. Honing our warfighting skills has primacy in all we do. Modern guys and aggressively lead with new concepts and approaches. And trust is the foundation of our profession. Honing our warfighting skills. We exist to fight and win our nation's wars. We need to be so good at what we do that every day our adversary wakes up and goes, not today. It's what we do in our internal, uh, each of our individual services and how we develop it, how we bring ourselves together as a joint team, and how we work with our allies and partners, and how we work with the interagency. Uh, you've provided the advice on, on multiple uh, events, uh, uh, like special reconnaissance operations across all of our geographic commands. You track and analyze and assess uh, intelligence leading to the capture of high-value uh, targets around the world. You solve key logistics uh, challenges, like we, uh, how to provide food and water and fuel across the Indo-Pacific in the event of a conflict. As you think about modernizing and aggressively leading with the new concepts and approaches, we have the joint warfighting concept that was put into uh, a place uh, while I was still uh, the Air Force uh, Chief of Staff. And if you watch how that concept has come together and to bring together the uh, various service concepts to ensure we're ready not only to fight today, but also think about how we prepare and, uh, for tomorrow. It's the things we, uh, we do to modernize um, uh, across our force and using the data uh, through our J8 team um, and through our Joint Requirements Oversight Council. Uh, it's also how we uh, incentivize the fielding and rapid experimentation of the capabilities that will be in the hands of warfighters tomorrow. It's leveraging advanced algorithms uh, and on uh, uncrewed systems and alternative waveforms. It's how we look at uh, uh, combined joint all demand command and control, helping to ensure that the joint force can, can communicate no matter the environment. And you've uh, gone uh, beyond just the uh, technology and capabilities. You, you lead discussions that uh, I have with the joint chiefs, uh, how we determine uh, qualified candidates for uh, higher levels of, uh, of leadership, and you've improved the management of over, uh, more than 29,000 joint billets. Your work is ensured um, we have the right people the right training, all doing the roles and the authorities to deter, and if necessary, fight and win. Lastly, trust is the foundation of our profession. 
Um, I think about the trust that we do right by every one of our service members, how we do right by their families, how we gain trust of our elected officials, and most importantly, trust the American public. It's the work that we do in uniform and our civilian cadre uh, uh, co colleagues um, to instill that trust. But it's also to how we build and maintain that trust as we, uh, as we go forward. Why that's so important, because we're an all-volunteer force. And as all-volunteer force, uh, you know, we want to make sure our nation trusts us, trusts us that we can fight and defend, but at the same time, we'll be able to take care of their sons and daughters when they come to join us and raise their right hand and take an oath to support and defend the Constitution. Your work enables uh, quality of service efforts, which uh, provide our service members the means and capability to hone their war fighting skills and to be ready when the nation calls. Your work supports quality of life by shaping housing initiatives, child care programs, mental health resources, spouse employment initiatives, and uh, programs to co combat sexual harassment and sexual assault. Your actions have enabled uh, national responses to environmental disasters, logistics supports, uh, supporting FEMA operations and national medical assignments for civilian hospitals. I can tell you the joint staff delivers. Every day, you turn our leader's vision into reality, whether it's the president, the secretary of defense, or some crazy idea I might have. Thank you for what you do. Your work touches nearly every single dollar of our $825 billion budget. Just think about it. That's nothing to sneeze at, but it's the work that you do to make sure every dollar turns into action to ensure we can defend our nation. More importantly, you uh, shape the lives every day so Americans can enjoy the freedoms that we all enjoy. And so I appreciate uh, what you do and what you do matters. Uh, your work has a direct and measurable and personal impact on the 2.1 million men and women in uniform and nearly a million government civilians and almost 4 million family members. Often to say uh, success takes help, failure you can do alone. The Joint Staff is a team of teams. We have high performers throughout who uh, enjoy taking on a challenge and driving change. Today is about saying thank you for the work you do every day and thanks to your families, those that are here, those that are watching, and I'd ask you when you go home tonight, uh, for those that don't have a family member, tell them thank you um, or call them, um, send them a text, but tell them thank you for their support. Because of them, we're able to do what we do. Now, everyone on the Joint Staff deserves an award. Um, but today, um, at some point, we've got to pick the best of the best, and, and that's, what the, uh, that, that's why we're here today. And so we will uh, do the formal uh, recognition here shortly, but I want to share some interesting facts about some of our award winners. Now, one of the things I do when I do awards, I always ask for some less known, less cared about fact that would be interesting at a cocktail party. And so let me share some of those with our, about our award winners today. Uh, one had a grandfather that was born in the 1800s and fought in World War I. Uh, another played semi-pro baseball in the Gamecock League, which was a heritage that uh, traces its back to the Negro uh, Leagues. Uh, one was on the college roller derby team. And finally, one individual is a distant cousin of the singer from R REM that they've never met. <laughs> but there's always a chance. These winners all have interesting personal stories, and they exemplify our, our very best. I could not be prouder to serve alongside our award winners, but every member of the joint staff and every member of our joint team. It's clear to me through uh, my first seven months that we have a, a team of leaders who together move our joint force forward, tackling the toughest challenges today and preparing to take on those challenges of tomorrow, trans translating vision into reality. We can't predict the future, but we can surely shape it. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words today, and I look forward to recognizing our award winners. Thank you. Thank you, General Brown. The senior enlisted advisor to the chairman, Siak Black, will now join General Brown on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, General Brown and SEAC Black will recognize the directorate nominees and winners for each annual award category. The directorate no nominees will be coined and receive a certificate of commendation from the chairman. Those selected as the enlisted member, senior enlisted member, civilian, and action officer of the year will receive a coin, a certificate, and a joint service commendation medal. 
They will also share the stage with General Brown and Siak Black for their remarks. We ask that the audience remain seated for all presentations. We begin the presentations with the Directorate nominees for the 2023 Joint Staff Enlisted Service Member of the Year. From the Directorate of Management, Petty Officer First Class, Junique A. Wright. From the Directorate of Operations, Technic Technical Sergeant Casey P. Holmes. <laughs> From the Directorate of Logistics, Technical Sergeant Akila D. Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, from the, develop, from the Directorate of Joint Force Development, the 2023 Joint Staff Enlisted Service Member of the Year, Technical Sergeant Nathan K. Ilsley, United States Air Force. <laughs> Citation to accompany the award of the Joint Service Commendation Medal to Technical Sergeant Nathan K. Ilsey, United States Air Force. Technical Sergeant Nathan Ilsey, United States Air Force, distinguished himself by meritorious achievement with his selection as the Joint Staff Enlisted Service Member of the Year, calendar year 2023, from January 2023 to December 2023. He was instrumental in developing a contingency plan to maintain service for the over 2,000 joint military personnel who require training over the next year with a 60% instructor manning, as well as maintaining a healthy work tempo for 48 instructor cadre. Technical Sergeant Ilsey leveraged his role as training manager to organize, organize the senior trainers in the Personal Recovery Academy to develop a plan that met the needs of the newly reorganized training force and the newly hired instructors. Technical Sergeant Ilsey's efforts mitigated security and training shortfalls across four teams of DOD civilians and created new opportunities for civilian professional development. Technical Sergeant Ilsey also developed and executed a first-of-its-kind JPRA mobile training team to support Operation Inherent Resolve human elements he traveled overseas training 21 high-risk personnel. Throughout this year, he led to the preparation of 244 joint military service members to fulfill the requirements of the National Defense Strategy through robust intelligence collection in all regions of vital interest. He was also especially selected for mobile training team to conduct post-training exercises, mitigating liability for INSCOM and Naval Special Warfare, preparing teams for deployment to counter near-peer threats. Technical Sergeant Ilsey also managed three project teams of 10 personnel to conduct a complete rewrite of 142 pages of course material, accomplishing the task in 25% of the expected time and delivering an updated course three months ahead of schedule. For the first time in the agency's history, he liaised with the KC-135 Weapons School to mentor three airmen performing white cell duties. The distinctive accomplishments of Technical Sergeant Ilsey reflect credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Joint Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, Technical Sergeant Ilsey. Thank you very much. I am deeply honored to receive the Joint Staff Enlisted Member of the Year Award. It is a testament to the hard work and dedication and support of so many incredible people in my life. Cicero said, gratitude is not only greatest vir virtues, but the parent of all others. And I have many people who I need to express my gratitude to. First and foremost, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to my fiance, Kayla. Your unwavering love and belief in me has been the guiding light through many challenges and triumphs. You are my rock, my inspiration, and my greatest blessing. To my mom and dad and to my family, I want to thank you for your unwavering love, support, and the sacrifices that you made throughout my life to help me to get where I am today. 
to my coworkers, and especially Dom, Jonathan, Casey, and Travis, and Bruno, your camaraderie, collaboration, and friendship made every milestone possible that we achieved, and I'm immensely grateful to all of you. I also want to acknowledge the mentors, teachers, and leaders who have shaped my career, one of the most incredible of whom you'll get to meet very soon. You unlocked every single potential in me that I could have possibly achieved over the course of my career, and I will forever be grateful to everything that you did for me. On this special day, I share this award with everyone who has played a part in my journey. And from, the, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Ilsey. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue presentations with the Directorate nominees for the 2023 Senior Enlisted Service Member of the Year. From the Directorate of Management, Senior Master Sergeant Christopher I. Mercado Wallace. From the Directorate of Operations, Master Sergeant Jason A. Bouchon. Unable to attend today, from the Directorate of Strategy, Plans, and Policy, Master Sergeant Aurora C. David. From the Directorate of Command, Control, Communications, and Computer and Cyber, Senior Master Sergeant Kevin L. Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Directorate of Joint Force Development, the 2023 Joint Staff Senior Enlisted Service Member of the Year, Master Sergeant Rebecca S. Wolford, United States Air Force. <laughs> Citation to accompany the award of the Joint Service Commendation Medal to Master Sergeant Rebecca S. Wolford, United States Air Force. Master Sergeant Rebecca S. Wolford, United States Air Force, distinguished herself by meritorious achievement with her selection as the Joint Staff Senior Enlisted Service Member of the Year, calendar year 2023, from 1 January 2023 to 31 December 2023. Sergeant Wolford served as the superintendent of two flights consisting of 18 civilian and military personnel to train 1,042 joint personnel through specialized survival, evasion, resistance, and escape courses. Sergeant Wolford adeptly managed nine separate programs, course schedules, and professional development. Additionally, she led her training selection through a 32% manning defi deficit to ensure uninterrupted training for a chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff mandated course without losing any student capacity. Furthermore, she led and personally instructed over 800 students through high-risk role-playing scenarios, taught 556 academic lessons, and was personally recognized by the Defense Intelligence Agency's Senior Executive Service Director of Operations for her professionalism. As the additional duty first sergeant, she served her 96-member organization by advising the Commandant on unit morale, health, and welfare, liaised with her career field manager and Air Force Personnel Center to enable inter-service inter transfer and expertly managed three corrective actions exceeding the chairman's intent to build a joint force. Next, she assisted with the agency's largest Toys for Tots drive to date, exceeding expectations by collecting over $10,000 worth of toys for the community in a single day. Finally, Sergeant Wolford piloted a project of emerging threats to capture personnel, integrating with five Department of Defense organizations, validated three tactics, techniques, and procedures, and, remained, and recommended four curriculum changes to five service, survival, evasion, resistance, and escape schoolhouses. The distinctive accomplishments of Master Sergeant Wolford reflect great credit upon herself, the United States Air Force, and the Joint Staff.
Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Wolford. Thank you, General Brown and SEAC Black for the honor. I'm extremely humbled to be selected as the Joint Staff Senior Enlisted Member of the Year. This is not something I could have done without tremendous support. First, I wanna thank my family, my husband, Aaron, and my daughter, Miriam, who are here today, and my older sister, Chris, thank you for being here today remotely. They have been there for every rant and every triumph. To Mace, Darby, Ryan, and Jess, thank you for being the brothers and the sisters that were there for me no matter what. I could not have gotten this far in my career or in life without my family always being there for me. I could not have accomplished nearly as much without the guidance and hard work of my JPRA, JPRA team. My leadership, Colonel Keene and Chief Daubert, my PRA leadership, Lieutenant Colonel Arnold and Senior Master Sergeant Price, thank you, as well as my fellow SEER 220 instructors and my supervisors, Kelly and Scott, you all gave me multiple opportunities to succeed and gave me space to fail along the way. This award is a testament to how amazing our team is and how we, hard we work together. Finally, I want to thank my mentor, Chief Master Sergeant Biles, for always pushing me to be better for my family and for my fellow service members. She has given me a lot of encouragement and very direct feedback over the past eight years, and it was always what I needed to hear. Thank you again for this honor. I am proud to be a part of this team and a part of the Joint Staff. Thank you, Sergeant Wolford. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue presentations with the Directorate nominees for the 2023 Civilian Members of the Year. From the Directorate of Manpower and Personnel, Mr. Brian J. Rogers. From the Directorate of Intelligence, Ms. Charlotte E. Carlson Willis. From the Directorate of Strategy, Plans, and Policy, Mr. Nicholas J. DeFury. That was my fault, rookie narrator. <laughs> From the Director of Operations, Ms. Jamie K. Bell. Unable to attend today, from the Directorate of Command, Control, Communications, Computer, and Cyber, Mr. Deandra D. Bowens. From the Directorate of Joint Force Development, Mr. James G. Durdall. From the Directorate of Joint Force Structure, Resource, and Development, Mr. Marcus L. Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Directorate of Logistics, the 2023 Joint Staff Civilian Member of the Year, Mr. Matthew J. Foote. <laughs> Citation to accompany the award of the Joint Civilian Service Commendation Award to Mr. Matthew J. Foote. 
Mr. Matthew J. Foote distinguished himself by meritorious achievement, leading to a selection as the Joint Staff Civilian of the Year, calendar year 2023, from 1 January 2023 to 31 December 2023. Assigned to the Directorate for Logistics, Mr. Foote's exceptional professionalism, innovation, and leadership were evident when he steered defueling operations and closure of the Red Hill Fuel Storage Facility in the Indo-Pacific, ensuring the safe relocation of 104 million gallons of fuel and culmination of a two-year, $1 billion effort. Moreover, he was lauded by United States Transportation Command for leading the first ever bulk fuel feasibility assessment. This Indo-Pacific pilot program served as a proof of concept and paved the way to replicate this study across the globe to provide the chairman with a comprehensive view of readiness. Lastly, he supported the Israel conflict by resolving fuel distribution shortfalls and force protection concerns to ensure an uninterrupted supply of fuel to deployed Navy vessels in the Red Sea, supporting contingency operations. His efforts bolstered deterrence, dissuaded nefarious actors, reduced risk, and safeguarded regional security. The distinctive accomplishments of Mr. Foote reflect credit upon himself and the Joint Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Foote. Chairman Brown, SEAC Black, distinguished leaders, thank you. First and foremost, all, all praise be to God, for without him, none of this would be possible. General Kaczynski, your incredible leadership and this team, you give them the space to operate and to excel every day. Thank you. Admiral Moreau, Mr. Kelleher, Kaz, Captain Wilson, I see you out there, Colonel DePaul, Colonel Robertson, you guys make this all possible. Thank you. Thank you for your mentorship and leadership. To my J4 teammates, you guys are all truly impressive. I learn from each of you every day. It's a, it's a joy and an honor to come to work and learn from you. Um, this award is definitely not one for one person. This is definitely a team effort. Thank you for instilling your time and effort into me. Last but not least, my family. So here today, Ashley, Jaden, Jillian, family from afar, mom, dad, Tony, LaDonna, Jamie, um, and Susie, Uncle Jim, and uh, my brother from another mother, mother, Elliot. Thank you all for your love, support, dedication. Without you, I could not do this job every day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foote. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue presentations with the Directorate nominees for the 2023 Action Officer of the Year. From the Directorate of Management, Commander Justin G. Crabb. From the Directorate of Manpower and Personnel, Major Veronica A. Tiarina. <laughs> Unable to attend today, from the Directorate of Operations, Lieutenant Colonel Kyle J. Thompson. From the Directorate of Logistics, Colonel Scott E. Beatty. <laughs> Unable to attend today, from the Directorate of Strategy, Plans, and Policy, Lieutenant Colonel Rachel B. Downing. From the Directorate of Command, Control, Communications, Computers, and Cyber, Commander Connor L. O'Neill. <laughs> From, 
Unable to attend today, from the Directorate of Joint Force Development, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin G. Weary. Also unable to attend today, from the Directorate of Joint Force Structure and Resource Development, Commander Daniel K. O'Hara. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Directorate of Intelligence, the 2023 Joint Staff Action Officer of the Year, Lieutenant Taylor R. Stipe, United States Navy. <laughs> Citation to accompany the award of the Joint Staff Service Commendation Medal to Lieutenant Taylor R. Stipe, United States Navy. Lieutenant Taylor R. Stipe, United States Navy, distinguished himself by meritorious achievement leading to selection as Joint Staff Action Officer of the Year, calendar year 2023, from 1 January 2023 to 31 December 2023. Assigned as an Action Officer to the Defense Collection Watch Branch, Warfighter Support Division, Defense Collection Management Deputy Directorate, Intelligence Directorate, the Joint Staff, Lieutenant Stipe carried out duties as Senior Collections Officer on the National Joint Operations and Intelligence Center watch floor directly supporting the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Secretary of Defense, and other senior defense leaders. Notably, throughout eight global crises, Lieutenant Stipe expertly and dynamically performed contingency support to include timely indications and warning of imminent attacks with incredible precision and provided superior analysis to the Deputy Directors for Operations and Intelligence. His key collection operations insights armed senior leaders with essential information required to make sound strategic decisions and accurate planning considerations. Moreover, Lieutenant Stipe modernized the senior collections officer position by utilizing his coding knowledge to create automated tools to calculate collection completion, impacts, and trends across combatant commands and introduced new methodologies for providing tailored support. Additionally, due to his outstanding leadership and reliability, Lieutenant Stipe filled a critical gap as the Joint Staff J-2 Navy Elements Assistant Senior Service Advisor, leading 30 sailors, resulting in 13 advancements, 6 reenlistments, and 11 personal awards. Finally, Lieutenant Stipe consistently sought out opportunities to further his professional and educational development, completing Joint Staff Professional Military Education Phase 1 four years ahead of required completion. The distinctive accomplishments of Lieutenant Stipe reflect credit upon himself, the United States Navy, and the Joint Staff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Stipe. Morning, Chairman, uh, SEAC, distinguished guests, family and friends. Uh, it is truly an honor to be standing up here today. And all my accomplishments uh, during this incredible year, none of them have been achieved alone. Uh, I want to thank uh, everybody who helped make this moment a reality. My wife, Emily, uh, who tiptoed around to let me sleep during weeks of midnight shifts, and whose fresh baked cookies kept me in the good graces of our watch teams. Em, I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, my parents, who deserve an award more than I do. Uh, in every way, I am who I am today because of their unconditional and unending support. And my brother Kyle, who paved an enviable trail of success uh, and drove me to compete and, and become the best uh, version of myself. Just this once and maybe only for today, I may have bested him. <laughs> uh, and finally, my joint staff and DIA teammates. Uh, I've been incredibly fortunate to serve in multiple roles that allow me to work with so many great people and in support of such valuable missions. Uh, my fellow watchstanders have been the most professional and entertaining co-workers, their shared interests in global events and dedication to excellence made those long nights and weekend shifts not just bearable, but enjoyable. Thank you all. Thank you, Lieutenant Stipe. Ladies and gentlemen, please give all of our nominees and winners another round of applause. At this time, we ask that you please stand and remain in place for the departure of the official party. This concludes today's ceremony. We invite you to join in congratulating the award winners in the receiving line held outside the rear doors of the auditorium. Thank you and have a pleasant day.